You must be at least 18 years of age to listen to the following podcast. I am Robert Black, and you are listening to Sexual Heroes. My guest in this episode is a true gentleman and a hot, hairy exhibitionist. You can find him on Twitter exposing himself to more than 23,000 hard, horny followers, including me. He goes by the username FurryCritter572. Being the fan that I am, I couldn't resist using my role as a podcast host as an opportunity to get to know him better. Hey, Furry Critter. Thank you for joining me on Sexual Heroes today. Hey, Robert. Thank you for having me. Wow, I came up with a huge list of questions, Uh-oh. believe it or not. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. But I'll just start with how I became aware of you. I, th- All right. I think it was Twitter, where you post a lot of photos naked. Okay. I do do and, that. <laughs> and you're hairy, hence your username, Furry Critter. Exactly. Um, and I happen to like hairy guys an awful nice. lot so so of course i would be attracted to you that's a good thing did you post on tumblr prior to this i did i was on tumblr for years um up until tumblr went away i'm sure i saw you there as well and yeah. and now on new tumble i come across your pictures as well so yeah your yes. your your furry naked body is all over the internet yes it is uh, twitter is is my, the main place where i post things now pretty much the only place you know, you admit you're an exhibitionist. Yes, I am. And that's a big part of your sexuality, I take it. It is, correct. How big a part of your sexuality is it? I, it's a very big part of who I am. I mean, I didn't really discover that. I think I, I suspected it in myself, but I didn't really start doing anything with it until my mid-30s, probably. Um, just had a this desire to, to do that. I don't know. I, you know, um, so it's, it's a big part of who, of who I am and my sexuality, as you said, I pretty much try to post something every day. It's kind of part of my daily routine just to put something out there. Was there an initial incident when you, when the light bulb went off and you thought, wow, I really like being an exhibitionist. You know, this probably goes, I don't know how far back into my history you want to go with this kind of thing. (laughs) Yeah, as far back as you want to go. When I was younger, and this was back in the days before the internet, there were like porn magazines and Playgirl magazines and what, you know, what have you that I would get my hands on and look at and and do what, you know, what every other guy does when he gets a hold of those things. Um, But there was just always this part of me that so admired the people, <clears throat> the men who would put themselves out there like that, like just exposing themselves, just like, you know, in all their glory, here I am. And there was just a part of me that admired that. And I just, I wanted to do that for some reason. Well, I totally get that. I mean, I was exactly the same way. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think a lot of that comes, um, you know, I've, I've tried to, uh, I guess, psychoanalyze all of that <laughs> through the years is where all this comes from. But there was so, so long that I was suppressing my sexuality and suppressing all that. Um, I think some of it for me is just like finally owning who I am, um, owning my sexuality and just putting it out there and saying, I'm not going to hide this anymore. This is me. I'm proud of it. You know, take it for what it is. I think for me, it started the exhibitionism. I think watching Robert Conrad getting tied up in wild, wild West okay, and starting those fantasies about what it would be like to be tied up and stripped down and not mm-hmm. having control over who's watching. Or I think that's where it started yeah. for me. Yeah. You've posted online. You're all over the internet. Has your exhibitionism led to you doing this? In person, no, it hasn't. As far as in a in a sexual type way, are you asking, or uh, would would you be someone that we would see, say, at a Palm Springs resort here? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. I've, I've I've done that many times. Going to um, been to Fort Lauderdale 
a few times to a couple of the of the gay resorts there, all male campgrounds, that sort of thing. When when it's in an environment like that, I'll be one of the first ones to you know shed the clothing and go for it. Um, I certainly enjoy that. I remember going to Hillside Campground when I lived on the East Coast. Okay, and I always enjoyed that. And yeah. from time to time, I grab a seat somewhere, maybe at my own campsite and start stroking and yeah. and people would walk by. Would that be something that you would do too? Or is it, is it just, I, I would do that in the, in the right setting or at the right time. For me, a lot of it is just, I, I enjoy being nude. You know, I consider myself to be a nudist to a degree. I don't necessarily live in a place where I can do that a lot, but I'm nude at home as much as I can be. Um, and when I go to a place where it is accepted or expected or whatever, um, I certainly enjoy that just to be free of the clothing. I enjoy just, you know, being outside, being in the sun, being in the pool, whatever, um, naked. Um, <clears throat> that can certainly turn into a sexual thing and, and it has, but that's not necessarily my first thought or the, the first reason that I do those things. What would be the ultimate act of exhibitionism for you? I would assume that, you know, or, or I would say the ultimate thing would be having sex in front of people or having an audience. Um, I've certainly been in group sex settings before, but as an exhibitionist, having people specifically just like watching me in action would be probably one of the ultimate things that I haven't necessarily done that except through you know a few things on Twitter here and there, but I haven't even posted a whole lot of videos of me in action on there to this point. I remember a post that you put on there asking for input about that. Mm -hmm. What might people like to see you do? Did you get any feedback? I did actually, I've done that a time or two through the years. I did that on Tumblr as well. Cause I'm, I'm curious as to, you know, people who follow me, like I, I love to know what it is about me that caused you to, to follow me or, or whatever. So I, th I find it interesting to see what people would like to see. I, I, I feel like that's a fair thing to ask sometimes, and, I, and it's an interesting thing. Um, I, the overwhelming majority of people wanted to see either action shots or videos. And that's the one thing I probably have failed to post a lot of for whatever reason. Um, most of my stuff is just solo steals. So I'm thinking about increasing that a little bit. <laughs> Like maybe a masturbation video. Yes. So most most of what you have published on Twitter has been basically selfies. They're, mm -hmm. they're pictures you're taking of yourself. But you did get a, at least one, and I think probably more than one, uh, photo session with Real Men Real Life. Yes, we have done, to this point, three or four photo sessions. Wow. Um, four, I believe. And we're talking about doing some more because he, um, real men, real life, the photographer likes to, one of his things is to take, take a guy and kind of follow him through the years. And he's done that with several other people. Um, and I find that very interesting. That is interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. I've kind of agreed to, to be a part of that because I, I love that concept because yeah, I enjoy looking back at my Tumblr posts and whatever, and just seeing how I've changed or what's different, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to me. Um, but yeah, I've done, I think four or five photo shoots with him and that came out of my Tumblr post. That's how I got hooked up with him. Well, I can tell you over time, you're just getting better and better. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm getting older and <laughs> gaining a little weight or whatever's happening, you know, but it is what it is. <laughs> I like both of those qualities. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So everything you post now is free, yet there are many people on Twitter who want you to go to their OnlyFans site or their Just For Fans site. Is that something that you have ever thought about? And and if it's not of interest to you, why, why not? I have definitely thought about that. I guess the reason, I don't know, the, uh, one of the reasons that I have not done that is I think I would feel pressure at that point to post certain things or to make sure I post more regularly or something at this point, it's just at my discretion. I don't have anybody paying me for content. So I don't feel like I owe anybody anything, if that makes sense. 
I get that totally. I, yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way. I think, although I think it would be a lot of fun, I think I would probably tend to post things there that I may or may not post on Twitter um, for whatever reason. I just don't know that I have the, the time commitment, number one, to make sure that I'm posting things and enough content that, that people feel like they're getting their money's worth. And there's also another opportunity for exhibitionism these days on platforms like Chatterbait, which is one that I use. Is that interesting to you at all? I find it interesting. Um, I've never really done much there. I, I've The only thing I've ever done on Cam was several years back, I would get on, um, what was it, Cam 4, I think that's what mm-hmm. it was. I would get on there occasionally and would get a huge rush out of just watching how many people were logging on and, <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and watching me. Um, so I've done that a, a few times, but I've never really done anything with Chatterbait or anything that's the more more current type things for in that, in that area. Although I do find it interesting. That's kind of my trip. I like the live immediate interaction with people. The exhibitionism ever caused any problems with your personal life relationships work? It has not. I, there are, I have a few friends who are aware of what I do. I don't go around and make it known to people if they find Mm -hmm. it fine. Um, but it's not something I just go around and talk about. There may be others who've seen it and just haven't told me. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but no, it's, it's never caused any issues. Like when, my, when I started dating my boyfriend, um, I told him pretty early on, I've done these photo shoots. I enjoy doing this. I'm on Twitter or whatever, um, just so that there's no, no secrets, no issues. And it, it's never caused a problem. So I want to talk a little bit about being hairy. Okay. And I did... I posted a a Twitter survey a while back, and the question was, are you happy with having a hairy or smooth chest? Complete the following statement. I'm, and then I had four possible responses. Uh, I'm smooth and happy. I'm smooth, but wish I was hairy. Mm -hmm. I'm hairy and happy. And I'm hairy, but I wish I was smooth. Okay. And not surprisingly, the biggest response was, I'm hairy and happy with 52, well, almost 53%. Then I'm smooth, but I wish I was hairy. And that was almost 31%. So we're up over 80%. And the rest was, uh, I'm smooth and happy. That was about 14%. And I'm hairy, but I wish I was smooth, uh, less than 3%. Okay. So I wasn't surprised because I think hairiness is a really big deal in the gay community. Right. I think it's a huge turn on. I think if you're hairy, it's a real gift. I mean, I wish I was hairy. I've always wished you know, that I had a hairy body, a hairy chest. And I'm wondering, is that something you're aware of? Do you know that that's like power part of your draw? I would say I've been made aware of that through, you know, Tumblr and Twitter and whatever, because people are constantly commenting on that, which I love. For so long, I never thought anything about it because I I became hairy pretty early on (laughs) through puberty. (laughs) You know, it happened really fast. So I don't, I don't really remember it, you know, not having it or wishing I had it or whatever. I just, I've always just kind of been like this. Was it something that your friends commented on when you were young? Yes. I mean, they've, I had a few friends who pointed out the fact that I was, you know, getting a beard faster than they did or growing chest hair faster um, because I did grow it fairly early. I think I was having to shave before my friends ever were um, as far, you know, my face and everything. Um, so I, I was aware that I was a hairy guy, but I never, I guess I never thought that much about it or whatever. Hmm. Um, <laughs> well, to us smooth guys that wish we were hairy, it's a big deal. It's but, you know, I, deal. I remember because I'm 45 years old. So I remember earlier in my, in coming out and, or, or, you know, when I was a younger guy, it wasn't considered a great thing by everyone to be hairy. Like, it, you know, people in porn or whatever were shaving their body hair and mm. you didn't see that as much, but I still was 
I was comfortable with, it, with what I have or whatever. Um, I did, and I haven't told this to very many people, but I'll tell it now. I was, I dated, a, or didn't really date a guy, but I hooked up with a guy and was, you know, kind of was interested, whatever. Um, and he made the comment that I should shave my chest hair. Hmm. And for whatever stupid reason, I did it. It's the only time that I've ever done it. <laughs> and right after I did it, I thought, you are so stupid. That is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life because it just, it didn't feel like me anymore. It just wasn't right. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, either this is me, <laughs> I'm comfortable with myself, either either take it or leave it. But that was, that was a lesson learned. I'm sure we've all done stupid things we regret, but that's one of mine. <laughs> well, I want to talk about one time that I shaved. I don't have very much hair, but what I have, I want to hold on to as much as possible. And for my, not my first porn shoot, but uh, the second one, when I got hired by Zeus videos, Zeus Mm -hmm. studios for the first shoot, I was asked to shave my body and my face. And I mean, every bit of my body. Wow. And I so did not want to do that. Right. But I wanted the gig. So I, I, I did it. I was very new. I didn't feel like I could say anything. I really wanted to do it. So I just did it. So right. if people have ever seen the video tight ropes 30, they would, that that's a little uh, insight behind, uh, <laughs> behind the video. I really hated that. Nice. And I had even grown a goatee because I was wanting to, you know, have the facial hair too for the shoot. Yeah. So when it comes to grooming, what do you do or don't do? I really don't do much of anything. Um, obviously, I have a I have a beard. Um, I will trim my beard occasionally, just trim it back a little. I've I've had a beard since I was in my twenties, um, and it, to me, it's just it's just part of who I am. I don't want to see myself without it. So, but I'll, I'll you know I'll keep it trimmed up or keep it in shape or whatever. That's about the only grooming that I do. What about your balls? I will, on occasion, I will shave my balls simply. And that's that's been a recent thing because I've kind of gotten into ball stretchers or ball weights. Mm-hmm. And I find that the hair hurts. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. if, you, if you do it just the wrong way, it's not as comfortable. So sometimes if I'm really wanting to get into that for a bit, and it's an off and on thing for me, I will shave my balls. But it's, it's for that reason. It's not for cosmetic reason or whatever. Um, it's just for comfort. So no chest hair trimming, anything like that? No. That's awesome. Not a bit. Even my my, uh, my bush is completely natural. <laughs> um, I, I just don't do much with it. I, I, I like it. I'm looking at a picture of you right now, and it's after we get off this call, I might have to go take care of my stuff. <laughs> That's uh, the best compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed lately that there seems to be this trend of hairy guys, like really hairy guys, shaving their whole crotch, the crotch, balls, totally bare? I have seen that, yes. That is frightful. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I, I hate it. I, I hate to offend any of my listeners that may be grooming that way, but I don't get it. Yeah, it, I am not a fan of that. Um you know, I've always said I've through the years I've been with my preference is a naturally hairy guy. That's just what I'm attracted to. Um, any guys I've been in a relationship with have been that way. Um, I have been with guys in other circumstances that were naturally smooth or not as hairy. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I can see attractiveness in just about any body type. But for a guy to be hairy, and to have a problem with it and want to get rid of it or to trim it or shave it. I, I don't understand that. Um, mm-hmm. It's not something I can wrap my brain around <laughs> and it's not something I'm attracted to. Um, it makes me sad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, why <laughs> would you do that? I, I just don't get it. For myself, if I were Harry, cause I know it is so, so desirable right now. So popular. If, if I had a clone or a twin and, we were totally identical except that one of us was hairy and we each had a chatter, chatterbait channel running. Mm-hmm. I am sure the hairy version of me would probably have, you know, 10 times as many people watching. <laughs> Is there a next step to, 
to all this? Is it just doing the action, you know, contemplating doing some um, action videos for your Twitter? Do you think it's going to go any further? You think this is pretty much where it's where it'll be? I think I will push the envelope for myself just a little bit more because I do have a desire to do that. I don't know exactly what that's going to be. I, I mean, I would love to to do more, whether it's masturbation videos or videos with another guy, I think would be a lot of fun. You know that it would be very easy for you to get a porn gig with a studio. <laughs> I've had people tell me that. I I don't see it. Like I, I'm like, there, there's no way that's going to happen. But I've, I've had people say, you know, why are, why are you not signing with blah, 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 or whatever? I, I, I don't see it. <laughs> so... Like I said, I'm still, I still ask people, why do you follow me? What do you, what is this that, you know, what do you see that you like? Because it kind of baffles me in a way. Before the interview, a uh, ways back, I had asked you, do you identify as a bear, a cub, any of that kind of language? And you mm-hmm. said, what did I say? I, I mean, I feel like I probably think of myself as more of a cub because to me, and this may be all in my brain, but to me, a bear is someone who is a, of a little bit bigger stature than I am, maybe even hairier, I don't know, and possibly even a little bit older just in my mind. But sometimes I forget how old I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, other people probably have a completely different perspective on that than I do, because um, I'm, I'm not a very big guy. And to me, a, a bear is a guy who's just bigger than me. How tall are you? I am about five nine. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm the little guy here. I'm five six. <laughs> okay. And shrinking. <laughs> yeah, I think I probably am in that same category. <laughs> Anything else you want to share with the listeners today? Anything about you sexually you think they would find interesting? Maybe something we might be surprised to know. Hmm. You're gay, correct? Yes, I am gay. Not by. Not by. Are you kinky? I can be. Mm-hmm. Yes. I um, I get into water sports occasionally. Mm. I have a big foot fetish. Mm. Just ask my boyfriend. I'll probably drive him crazy with it, but <laughs> it's one of my things that will, will get me off every time. Wow. I started out being pretty much an exclusive bottom, but I have sort of through the years, I've sort of mostly become more of pretty much an all the time top. So that has sort of shifted for me as I've gotten older. Well, there's a lot of bottoms out there that are um, happy to hear that <laughs> for, for, for their fantasy sake. <laughs> Furry Critter, thank you very much for being on Sexual Heroes today. And it was really fun getting to know you better. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed talking with you. For information with links about a guest appearing on Sexual Heroes, visit the show notes at sexualheroes.com or on your favorite podcast app. And while you're there, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. You can follow and message me on Twitter at Robert Black XXX and on Facebook at Real Robert Black. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.